Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time visiting, thank you so much for joining me. I am actually going to be doing the part two of the Blends 2 video today. Part one, we made this beautiful little card using the blend technique, stamping technique, embossing, painting. This time we're gonna use three other techniques different ways you can use the blends and we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to create a piece with this as well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start with the first technique. We're going to be using frog, flagstone, silver, and coconut. Silver is a metallic so the properties on this are a little bit different than the others. It's a little bit thicker but it still is beautiful and you can get it to move and everything. This technique you probably have seen it with some other products and we're basically going to be doing a dip technique. So I'm just going to take take down um, and throw down a few dots of each color. So that was the frog. This one is the flagstone. And then I'm going to be throwing down coconut also. I'll put that kind of with those. And then I'm going to be throwing on some silver. And with the silver, I do like to kind of draw it out just because it is thicker, so we want it to move and it's easier to move It's if it's kind of more of in a thinner line. So I'm going to set those off, take a water bottle, and just spray it to get it to kind of loosen up and move around as we dip and swipe our card. So I'm just going to dip it and swipe it and dip it and swipe it like so creating this beautiful background. Look at that. So that's one way you can use it. I'm going to just, I don't want to waste it, so I'm going to go ahead and do it again with the leftovers here. And the more you mix the colors, the more blended they look and you get more of a watercolory uh, type background but it's so pretty. So we're going to set this off aside to dry and then we're going to move on to our second technique but I want you to remember this. Remember these because we're going to be using them in our final project. Okay, so for this technique, it is going to be utilizing the gel pl press plate. This is the only ink that I know of that I have been able to successfully use on the gel press plate. It is beautiful. We're gonna be pulling at least two prints off of this and we're gonna be using this again in our final project. And once this is dipped, because the, the color on this is so intense, so vibrant, it is wet. We are going to be utilizing the glistening glass embossing powder as well as the polished silver. These are also by Eileen Hall. You can get them in her Etsy store. They're fantastic. They are um thick embossing powder so they have a very cool look and it's such a wonderful way to create a background piece is to throw it on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw down some wild, actually no, excuse me, I'm going to throw down some rose gold. I'm throwing this down first because as you know, as I previously stated, the metallics tend to uh, be a little bit thicker because the kind of property. So I just want to get that out on the on the gel press plate first just a little bit and we're going to be doing some uniform that's a lot of ink I think we're going to get more than two pulls on this which is fine uniform this is a beautiful it looks like a looks like a military uniform we're going to do some pansy which is a lovely purple and then we're going to do some wild berry And I just spread that all out. And then from here, I'm gonna take my brayer, brayer it out like so. And look how intense and beautiful that is. So we're gonna lay down, probably, we're gonna probably get three pulls off of this. This one, and it's, I am brayering over the back because I need that back also to have some color on it with the technique that I'm, the project we're going to use. It's going to utilize both sides. So it's going to, this is perfect. Like it's going to be really cool. So how pretty is that? And then let's see what the press looks like. Look at that. 
So from here, I'm just gonna lay that off. It does take a while to dry. So I wanna just lay that off for now because we are gonna emboss it in a second. I'm gonna do it again because I think I can get another pretty good pull off of this. And I am adding quite a bit of pressure to my brayer as I do this. Look at that one, isn't that pretty? So from here, I wanna clean off my gel press plate. So I'm gonna add some paint and I'm just going to bray this out like so. I may have to do it again because it doesn't look like that ink was dry. So we'll see, that's okay. And then I'm just gonna lay out another piece. I like that muted in the back. I think that's so pretty, that muted. Okay, let's see what this one did. Look how pretty that one is. Ooh, love it. All right, let me get another, I'm gonna do another one. I think I can do another pull on this. We'll see. This one might not be much at this point. And then we will emboss. And you notice how I'm I'm not in I'm not too concerned about that drying because this is a you have playtime on this. All right, this one again, and then we will call this good and we will emboss our image. And another benefit of using the brayer on the back is it cleans it. <laughs> so you're cleaning your brayer as well, which is awesome. And it's muted, but it's beautiful. That's so pretty. All right, let me set this aside and we're gonna go ahead and emboss this image right here. So I'm just gonna take my little tray and I'm gonna throw on some clear embossing first. Kind of all over the place. Let that kind of move around. Put this up in here. And then I'm going to apply some silver, the polished silver on top. Just like that. And then again, we're gonna tap off the extra. And we will heat set that and you are going to see how gorgeous this is love this stuff the cool thing is is this dries it totally moves like liquid now it does stay hot for some time so you do want to make sure that you keep your you do it under uh, because this thick so we're going to go under and start to melt it and then we'll go on top but it does stay hot so be careful when you touch it You don't want to leave it in one spot or else you'll get a fire. Nobody wants that. And then once it starts to melt, you can go ahead and flip it over and finish it off on the top. And as you can see, it's starting to melt in spots.
So look how pretty that is. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So this is actually going to be our back piece for our mixed media piece that we're going to work on. Um, because I just, I love it. I think maybe, maybe it won't, maybe it'll be the centerpiece. Hmm, we'll see. So from here, once this cools, you can handle it, but we are going to move on to the next technique. This technique is one of my favorite. It brings me back to those days in preschool and when I taught preschool and then when I had kids of shaving cream. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but the reason why I, as a preschool teacher, would have my little students play in shaving cream on the table was because it cleaned it. So that is kind of what I'm doing here. I always save this technique for the very last thing I'm going to do simply because it can clean up my surface for me because that is just whipped soap. So make sure that you buy a shaving cream that you enjoy the smell of. I just get Walmart's brand for like a buck 19 or 99 cents or something like that. And usually my 18 year old will steal it because his little brother who's 14 stole his. So I don't get much use out of this before it disappears out of my craft room. So for this, we are going to use melon, tutu, golden, copper, another metallic, and nutmeg. And if you did go ahead and watch that first video, you would have seen the other colors. So this now completes the entire line of um, the blends too. And I've demonstrated everything after this. So make sure you catch that. Also, at the end of the video, I am going to post a few pictures for you of what each color looks like um, in groups of three. I just blended them out and you'll be able to get a really nice visual. So if you want to see that, make sure you uh, stay um, watching. All right, so you're just gonna take your foam. It does not take much, not even kidding. And you're just gonna start to kinda, you know, lay out your color. I'm gonna start with golden. And that's a lot. You don't need that much. You could really just do a drop, but I go kinda crazy, you know. Melon, Tutu, Nutmeg, and some Copper. And then we are just gonna take our paper and lay it on in there and smoosh it around. Again, you're gonna get several pulls from this and you can dip and swipe the more you go. There's one pull and Let's go ahead and do this. And these were turning out fantastic. That pull. Ooh, look how pretty that one is. This is always such a wonderful discovery for me. <laughs> and I'm gonna try to get one more. So you can really lay down like half of the um, shaving cream that I did and get some beautiful pulls, you know, two or two, one or two pulls. So it doesn't really take much. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what you can do. You can either let this dry naturally um, and some of the shaving cream peaks will fall off, some will actually stay, or I'm gonna show you what you can do to kind of pull that color out and uh, get it to dry a little quicker. What you can do is you can take a uh, any flat edge, if you have an old hotel key, this would work, and you're just gonna pull that, that card off. And if you notice that there is some spots that don't have color and you want it, you can just lay it out again and it'll give you a coverage on those spots. So we're lifting the shaving cream and ink, but we're also 
laying it out in areas that we want more coverage on. How cool is that, huh? And then this is what you do, and it'll dry much faster. Like this one has a lot of areas that could use some more color. So you just lift and pull and push into spots, and there you go. And I am cleaning my spatula off as I go. And I'm more of a pink and red and fan, so I naturally will pull that color off and hold the other colors on. Look how pretty that is though. Isn't this such a cool technique? Who would have thought shaving cream, right? Actually, Eileen Hall thought of it. I think I saw this on one of her videos and I thought, ooh, I want that product just so I can do this. So that's how you create. That's three other ways that you can use the blends, but we're not done yet. I'm gonna show you a really cool project that you can do. It's a mixed media project that you can do with your background pieces. We're gonna create a card front and we are going to use all of the little bits that we created, these backgrounds, pieces of it, to create this card front. And it's gonna be a flower. And what you're gonna to need to do is you're going to need to take your shaving cream, or what I did, I should say, your colors may be different, your shaving cream background, you're gonna tear it, and that's going to be the ground. And then you're going to want to cut a whimsical looking little, um, like, stem and then from your dips you're going to want to cut out some leaves and then from your other gel press you're going to want to take and cut six circles or so i'm going to use a two inch scallop you could use a one inch circle it doesn't matter and then once you do that i'll show you what you need to do from there once you get your circles cut, and again, it doesn't matter the size, um, it's just gonna make your flower um, a different size. I'm using a scallop uh, little circle two inch. You're gonna take, and you're just gonna fold it into thirds. This does not need to be perfect. When I first learned how to do this years ago, they're like, oh, you have to have, you know, eight, um, you have to have eight scallops or eight circles to make a flower and if they're not eight then you did it wrong and you have to get your measurements exact which is garbage. I don't fall for that anymore. Um, in fact, I don't ever like my my flower to go all the way around in a circle. I like um, the bottom petals to be missing. I don't like it to be perfect because nothing in nature is perfect. If it's too symmetrical, it just doesn't look real. Once you do that, you're going to want to take a scrap piece of paper, cut an additional circle, and we're going to build on this. So what we're going to do is we are going to, I like to turn over my scallops and I just did six because that's what my uh, paper held. So I like to just turn over my scallops like this, get them all kind of lined up like so. And then I like to adhere the backing once I get them lined up. And I like to use a good glue. I don't like to use um, a, I like to use a liquid adhesive because I can move it a little bit. And um, I really, for this project, I like the Beacon Mixed Media Glue because it allows me to move it around but it's not so slow drying that I'm waiting forever. So I'm going to take this piece like this and I'm just going to smoosh it over on the top like that and then I'm going to trim off the bottom but I'm going to get that pretty far up there kind of smooshing it up and I'm going to carefully turn it over like so and then I can just straighten it out from here. And when I first started to make these, I used to try to build on that bottom circle, but that was way too complicated. This was so much easier. And then from here, 
once I get it all to my liking, I'm going to put the center on. And for the center, I took a one inch circle cut scrap piece of paper, cut it out, put some clear, um, the clear blends too on there, and then covered it with some silver, uh, polished silver embossing powder and that is going to go right there in the center for the center of my flower and it looks like it's going to fit just perfectly i don't have to do any trimming which is always nice okay so we're getting there so i'm going to let this kind of set up for a minute or two I don't want it to adhere to the mat, so I am going to pull this over and just rub my finger and get that off. Set that off to the side for just a second, and we're gonna start to adhere this. So for this, I am using that beautiful background, and you're just going to, again, I like the liquid mixed media. This is going on a textured embossed slick surface. So it's kind of important that you uh, use something that can adhere to more than just paper. Then we're gonna add the floor, the ground, I should say. And again, I'm just using my Beacon mixed media glue. And we're gonna put our little leaves on. I love this project because it's so funky. And you can slip that under if you want. I kinda of like it over the top like that. And then from here, we're going to take our final piece and just get it set up. So and then once you get it all put together, you can go ahead with a paint over pen. I use Jane Davenport paint over pens on stuff like this and add in some like cute little, um, you know, um, doodles around, you know, if do some vines, whatnot, but isn't that so cute? Just a really cute little card base or mixed media piece. Let me show you the other card I created last night when I came up with this project. It's really cute. So for this one, this is the one I did last night. I did a bling in the middle, but I really wanted to showcase how you can use only the blends and like your punches to create an entire piece of art. Um, and so that's why I didn't use a, a bling in the middle and I did it this way. Plus I like that a little bit better. But I went around the edges with a Jane Davenport paint over pin and uh, just kind of gave it some definition. I did use this piece is, um, this flower is what I did on the background on this, but I like this one better because I feel like I missed some of those background beauties that's on the back side of the flower, you know, and I really wanted that piece to shine through. Both of the pieces are really cute. There's so many different things that you can do with this technique. If you have background papers that you just don't know what to do about, I encourage you to just pull out your punches and start to punch and create and tear paper and see what you get because it is going to be a masterpiece. Again, make sure you stay tuned at the end of the video if you're interested to see what the blends colors look like. I do have swatches that I created and I will be posting for you to view. Also, if you're interested in any of the supplies, I will have them linked down below. Um, and if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. I hope you consider subscribing if you haven't done so. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I always love to hear from you guys. Until next time, I'm Beth Golden. Happy crafting.